fun, I would elaborate a little more. There are a lot of little things for horn players that horn players need to know about and should do and should be aware of that are never taught to you by most teachers. But most professionals have picked it up along the line simply out of observation of other professionals and it's something that's handed down kind of unspoken. In a prior lifetime, for 24 years, I was a machinist and a class A tool maker. And uh, I made the machines to make the stuff. That's what a tool maker did. So I worked with metal and uh, machinery, lathes, mills, and uh, I eventually got up into CNC computer numerical control machines and the like. So I was in big production. I, I actually, uh, at the end of that career, I was managing several companies. Quite large companies, but uh, I never gave up playing the horn. And just to let you know, so, so I got into it so much that I was. This is a picture of me in one of the shops there. I was actually making hand horns, and so I got into and enjoying things like this. So I know what I'm doing on this, and please take my advice. You're getting it from a professional. I was uh, never a member of the uh, National Association of Brass Instrument Repair Technicians. Nappert. I, it's been so long. If I were a member, I'd know it offhand. But uh, in working with all these things, and this is, uh, I started putting together this, and like I told you, I about halfway down here, and I looked at the time says, finish this, but these are some things thrown in with some maintenance routines and things you need to know about the horn. Rule number one, and I stress this, I'm also now, I'm a music teacher and I teach uh, grades, oh my goodness, I'm not teaching kindergarten this year, but I'm, I'm teaching elementary and middle school. And when I'm starting my students, I tell them, when I open up their case, I point out there are two places that your instrument is safe, in your hands that's rule number one. Anywhere else, it's not if and when, but when you will damage your instrument. Gig bags. These are great. They're lightweight. Be aware that unless you have a hard case, it's not if, it's when you will ding your horn. So if you have a hard case, good for you. Gig bag is nice. It's portable, it's soft, but be aware that it's it's susceptible if it gets a hard knock, something's going to carry through. My other gig bag sits down in here, and I remember I clipped it on the edge, and I bent the edge right on here, which prohibited me from putting my bell on. So I went down to the shop, and that got repaired on that, but it does have, they are not being struggled on that. Rule number two, where I have the kids take out their instruments, says, always have a pencil, not a pen. They haven't found the bodies of the students Horn maintenance. Every horn player should have with them at all times with their horn the following. And I have listed down here. These are necessary. Mouthpiece, duh. But have a backup mouthpiece. There have been times, myself included, where I have gotten to some place to play something and I left my mouthpiece sitting on my stand but I've got my case and everything else. If you have an extra mouthpiece, you're set. may not be the one you love, but it's going to be one that you can do the gig with. I have actually three different mouthpieces in here for different ranges. I, 98% of the time, use this mouthpiece. For specialties, for specialties, <laughs> I have these other ones. You know, I've got one here, no backbone, it's a straight funnel all the way down. This is great for low notes. I can hit below pedal notes on this thing, but it's a very specialty. I have one that Dale Clevenger gave me, which was the designs of uh, uh, Schilke 23. He said, I use this mouthpiece when it's important to hit the notes above the staff. I don't have to play it loud, I just have to be accurate. And this is shaped, it's, it's more like a trumpet mouthpiece because it's a cup inside, it's, it's a rounded cup instead of a funnel type thing. And then I have just the previous mouthpiece that uh, I used before this one, I stepped up the board. This is my backup. But you need a backup mouthpiece. You need oil, meaning valve oil, or something 
like it or whatever oils you need. That's always important. Slide lubricant. They come in these nice little chapstick containers, and believe it or not, in a pinch, you can use chapstick. And if you're any kind of a brass player, you already are packing chapstick in your pocket. That's, that's just, you know, like one of those things you put in with you. It's been in my pocket. I carry that for decades now. Um, screwdriver. You can't change strings on your horn unless you've got a screwdriver, a small screwdriver, you know, just, just something that gets and does the job on the horns. You need a screwdriver. Also in there, ballast spring. Unless you're one of those fortunate people that have an all-mechanical valve assembly. In which case you need key oil to cut down the clickety-clack clatter. Something to dampen it. 90 weight gear uh, shift oil works. It slows it down. I'm just kidding on that. Um, and you need a cloth. Two things that I have is cloth. This is a clean chamois. You can get one of these things anywhere from $7 to $10 at Walmart in the auto section. Chamois by me, it's leather. My particular one for my horn, uh, I cut this off with that cloth. You can see this is getting kind of used now. It's about time I get up a new one. But if you don't like water coming out of your bell and your wet hand or something like that, you need a cloth. For each one of my horns, I have a black wash cloth. Because most places where you play, you're in a concert black or something like this, and this goes very nicely, covers up if you need a cloth on there. But a cloth is handy. Those are something you should pack with you all the time. Extra now, additional options. A cutting tool, like a knife, uh, small scissors. I have in my one bag here on my keychain. In my pocket, I've got one of these little things that comes with scissors. scissors. Never leave home without one. These are great. This is a toolkit in one. And I got to the airport and I got <laughs> on the plane. I walked through and the alarm goes off and I realized I had this and all my check bags were gone. I couldn't do anything with this. And they have now at the airport little things just outside where you go through the terminal and it says you can go there and they have little envelopes. So put these items in that you can't take in with you and have them mailed. So I got this mail to me from my Google Plus. <laughs> but uh, it's a knife. It's a cutting tool. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a long string on that repaired valve if you have like two or three feet of uh, valve string on there. Sugarless cough drops. I have them. The reason being, too, I had a gig that I was playing in Oklahoma City with the Oklahoma in a huge church. It was like uh, the Cathedral of Madeline here in uh, Salt Lake. And you whisper in there, everybody hears it. And I was, I had uh, come down with a very dry throat, sore throat, uh, cold the day before, and I could not stop coughing. I did not have any medication to stop the coughing. And these helped greatly. Because trying to play through and off at the same time. It just doesn't work. Sugarless, because if you use regular sugar lozenges, anything that has any, anything like that, you're just pouring syrup into your horn and you're going to gum up your bowels and you're going to end up having a bowel job. Sugarless will go right on through. Nothing sticks. That's why I recommend sugarless. And another item, a 3 sixteenths diameter dowel pin. Three sixteenths diameter dowel pin is when you need to pop a valve. And this is why I wanted you sitting around here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the valve out of my horn. I was kidding before when I said to take the horn apart. But uh, before we get into that, remembering always in your instruments, never, ever, ever on anything, force on your instrument. If you have to push extra force, something's wrong. If you don't know how to do it, Yes. 
Who's a good one around here? I go pretty much exclusively to Summer. 